If you want to make your scene transitions look more polished, then this is the video for you. I'll introduce the basics of using shaders to create smooth transition effects in Godot, building a foundation we can expand on later. As always, the project files are available through selected tiers on Patreon. And now, let's get started. In this video, I'm assuming you already have a scene manager that's used to change the scenes. But if you need help with this, then go check out the tutorial I made on this earlier. We're not really going to change anything that has to do with the actual scene change, so you should be able to follow along, even if you made your own scene manager. Okay, so the basic idea to make a transition animation is to just have a colored rectangle laid out on top of our game. And then our transition animation is actually just an animation of this rectangle. We can make it fade in and out, create sweep animations, diamond transitions, and much, much more. Right now, my scene manager is just a script that's auto-loaded. But to create the transitions, I need a full-blown scene that we can add more nodes to. So let's first create a new canvas layer scene for the scene manager, and then attach our scene manager script to its root node. We also need to change the script so it extends from canvas layer. Instead of autoloading this scene manager script, we then need to autoload the new scene instead. Before moving on, let's first make sure that everything still works as before. Let's also add a color rectangle to the scene. This will then be the node that we will animate for our transitions. It's important that we make our root node a canvas layer, because our animation is really just working like all our GUI items. The canvas layer will make sure that it stays on top of the screen, no matter where in the game the player is. If you for some reason want another type for your root node, then you have to add a canvas layer node to the scene that the rest will then be added to. And finally, we need an animation player to help us create our transition animations. Before we move into shaders, we can begin with a simple fade transition that's easy to create without a shader. Let's create a transition out animation in the animation player. I'm making mine last a second. At the first frame, we set the alpha value of the transition color's modulate property to be zero. And at the last frame, we set it to be 255. We can now play the animation and see that this will fade our transition color from invisible to black. Now we just need to play the animation when we want to fade out of a scene. In our scene manager script, we can make a reference to the animation player. And then before we change our scene, we play this new animation and wait till it's done before moving on. Let's see how this works. So now we fade out of our scene, but we also need to play the animation backwards after the scene change, so the transition color doesn't block the view of the new scene. Maybe this fading is all you need. That may very well be the case. But we can make a lot of fun transitions if we start using shaders. Let's first create a shader that's just used for a fading like the one we already have. First we need to add a shader material to our transition color. And then create our first new shader. I'm calling mine Fade. If you haven't worked with shaders at all before, 
Then I suggest watching my introduction to shaders before moving on. This will make it easier to follow along with the rest of the tutorial. To create our fade shader, we just need one uniform input, a float that tells us how far along in the transition we are. The hint range here is used to tell Godot what range of values we want to accept. Any value outside this range will then be clamped to the hint range. Okay, so in our fragment shader, we can then just set the alpha part of the color to equal the process, and the shader is then done. What we need now is a way to update the progress uniform for our transition. There are more than one way of doing this, but I think that using the animation player is the easiest and most flexible solution. So let's change our fade animation. So it changes the progress value of the shader instead of the alpha value of the transition color. If we test now, we should have the same fading as before. Only this time it's made using a shader. And now we have the basics set up for creating a bunch of fun shaders. For the rest of the shaders, we'll be using a fragment's UV coordinate to determine if the fragment should be discarded or not. The UV coordinates are also known as texture coordinates. They are among other things, used to determine what part of a texture is displayed in any given fragment. The values of each part of the coordinate goes from 0 to 1. In Godot, 0, 0.0 will be here at the top left corner, and 1.1 will be at the bottom right corner. Let's look at how we can use this to create a horizontal sweep. I start by considering what the transition should look like when the progress is 0, 0 0.5, and finally when it is 1. From this I can deduce that any fragment with a UVX coordinate larger than progress should be discarded. This fits all the cases I considered. So to create a horizontal sweep, we first check if UVX is larger than the progress, if this is the case, then we discard this fragment. You might not want to just play this backwards when the new scene fades in. Instead, we can add a new boolean uniform to our shader called reverse. And then in our animation player, we set reverse to false in the transition out animation. And create a new animation for the in transition where reverse is true. In our script, we then replace play backwards with the new animation played regularly. Back in our shader, we then only discard if reverse is false. And if reverse is true, when UVX isn't larger than progress, then we also discard. Changing this into a vertical sweep is easy now. We just compare UVY with progress instead of UVX. And if you want a diagonal sweep, then we can compare UVX plus UVY to progress. Only the range of UVX plus UVY is 0 to 2. So we also need to multiply progress with 2 to make everything match up.
And that's all for this introduction to transition shaders in Godot. If you want to see more advanced effects, then stay tuned for future videos. I hope you liked this video, and remember to like, subscribe, hit the bell and all that, if you want to see more like this in the future. Bye!